Hey folks, Harold over here at Finest with a little overview of the past uh, month plus of spring kind of turning into summer because I was busy and didn't get a lot of videos put together in that spell. So here's just a bunch of clips from that time period and a little look at some of the things that have been going on around our place during that spell. You'll see we have lots and lots of little chicks of all different ages. We've had four different mamas now raise five batches of babies for the spring, as well as we have one batch out of the incubators. So we got six batches of chicklets. If you want to check out what's going on with the bees, go back to the video before this one. Got a pretty in-depth look at what's going on in the beehives, but they're doing well. The ducks are certainly not fully mature, but they look pretty full grown. And the kittens are just a lot of fun to watch as they play and learn about the world around them and do a lot of playing with each other, which is just pretty fun. You might remember that really early in the spring, Foggy had a batch of chicks she hatched below zero. Next came Blackie, who hatched Foggy, among others, last year. She's now got 14 here that she's raising for this year. She's an excellent mama. After her, we had Ember, who raised our ducklings last year. It's always great when a, a little chick gets an earthworm as long as itself and everyone else follows it around trying to uh, get uh, part of the worm. It makes hilarious little chicklet chases. Anyway, um, Ember, who raised our ducklings last year, has a batch. Um, Foggy raised a second batch and Rafina, who's never gone broody before, has got 11 chicks running around under her right now. So we have lots of little babies. They're all a week or two or three apart, um, depending which batch you're comparing to which. And it's been fun to be watching all the babies grow up with their moms and running around the place here. The kittens are rapidly getting as big as their mother. Of course, Velcro is a pretty tiny cat, but the uh, little ones, I think, are all going to end up being larger than her when they're fully mature. It does look like the two black-ish ones are both girls, and the stripey and the orange one are both boys. So we got two and two.
well, there's a few more clips here of all four kittens playing with each other. At this point, the two boys, which we had already picked out just based on their personality before I was even positive they were boys, are up at my brother Micah's cabin working on rodent patrol up there. They caught a chiseler, which is uh, probably called a unit into ground squirrel. Think small groundhog the other day, and we're very, very proud to show off their work to him when he got home from work. Anyway, they're loving living on the, the mountainside where he is, and the two girls, which we've decided to call Button and Snap, because what else would you call two little girls that are Velcro's daughters, are at our place. So you'll still see some clips here of them all playing together before they move, but now the two boys have gone up and are living with him at his cabin on the, the hillside and seeming to love their life up there. Curly, of course, loves playing with the kittens, and they play with him. Though every now and then they get a little bit rough and scratch his nose. He still enjoys it. Among the list of many things that I enjoy about our flock of Icelandics is the huge variety of colors of these birds. So far, I can tell every single one apart. I know who is who, I know who's doing what, because even the most similar colored ones all have enough variations in their feathering or their combs or something that I can tell them apart. And it's always a little bit of like an exciting surprise to see what each chick uh, color it turns out to be as it's growing. Um, and yeah, it's just a lot of fun to, to watch them. And I really, really enjoy watching all the mothers just demonstrate their excellent mothering ability, protecting their chicks during storms, teaching them how to find food, snuggling them when they get cold, just being wonderful mothers. It's another thing I love about the breed. They're, they're really excellent with their mothering ability and we feel blessed to have quite a good handful of good broody mamas.
This year we had the most record asparagus harvest I've ever had from the patch I planted from seed eight years ago, nine years ago, something like that now. That was a single picking and made a wonderful meal. We have had record amounts of rain this spring, and the ducks are actually napping under the picnic table, though they enjoy being out in the rain. This is Foggy's second round of babies for the year. She's the one that hatched our below zero chicks. You're such a good mama. So we've tried to squeeze some other projects in between the rainstorms. We have gotten a few more bushes planted and are continuing to work to try to figure out the best methods of protecting the stuff that we want to have growing from the quack grass, which is really good at killing it all. Um, I will probably have another video more in depth on just that, but that's what the black plastic is for. That's not weed barrier. Quack grass comes straight through that like it doesn't exist. Um, but actual solid plastic with, you know, little openings cut around each tree and bush and then the the concrete blocks were something somebody else wanted rid of, so they were free and we're using them to hold down the edge there. My brother Micah came over. He often helps us with projects on the weekend, which is nice. He seems to enjoy getting meals over here and hanging out with us in return. And he does do a lot of uh, helping with various projects here. And sometimes we do projects at his place. So it seems to work out, but the concrete blocks are just holding the plastic down there. And then eventually the whole surface is going to be covered with rocks there to further protect the plastic. And the plastic is protecting the bushes. Something else we squeezed in between thunderstorms has been several days of wood splitting. Thanks to that big 28 ton log splitter, we have been able to cut up some uh, cottonwood trees, which were pretty gnarly, um, you know, very knotted wood, as well as some, some old, very old, uh, you know, they were long standing dead pine trees that also had a lot of knots. When you can bog down and nearly stall out a 28 ton splitter, you know that's probably around. You would not have been able to get into pieces by hand or with anything smaller. So that machine is not only makes the firewood splitting quicker, but has allowed us to use wood that would otherwise have just been waste wood for somebody else that would end up just in a big burn pile not used. And if you're thinking that doesn't look like it's going to fit in the tiny house stove, nope, it sure won't. The tiny house wood stove is now at Micah's cabin, and this is all the kind of logs that will fit in either the big stove that's in the shop, or hopefully in the currently non-existent stove for our currently non-existent house when we build it someday. But we're still working on having a good backup pile of firewood ready for that, and it does fit in the shop stove. So that is what we're working on here, and it's you know, we both just really enjoy any time we're working together on projects like this and are very thankful for a splitter that makes it possible to use wood that would otherwise be wasted because of its inability to be turned into a size that could be usable. So that is a, has been a wonderful, wonderful machine for us so far. <laughs> Thank you. 
The mornings where there's actually sun over the mountains instead of heavy clouds all day have been very few and far between, but the thick cloud cover has also meant there's been very few frosts this spring because it's kept things just a little warmer up into the, you know, 36, 38, even 40 degree range overnight, which is unusually warm for nighttime temperatures for us. So that has been nice. <laughs> Due to the non-stop rain, the grass that we don't even want growing out there in the middle got record tall before I could get a mower through it, so it almost looked like hay rows by the time I could mow it down just to keep the quack grass under control. Foggy's first batch of chicks is pretty much fully grown up. They're almost indistinguishable from the adults, and I think one of her girls actually laid an egg the other day. Um, but next to that, Blackie's 14 here are the, the next biggest chicks, and she has now decided that they don't need her anymore. She's taught them to forage and everything she knows about being a good chicken. She's even got them climbing stumps and, and tree branches there in the woods, chasing down ants, which there's some ant piles in those old stumps. And then she decided it was time for her to go back to being... Her, uh, you know, a regular chicken by herself and has left them on their own. So they still kind of hang out with each other like each batch of chicks does when their mother first decides they're good to be on their own. Not quite sure how many roosters and hens are in this batch. I think there's four or five roosters for sure, but they got to get a little bit older before I can tell. But I love seeing all their different colors. Lots and lots of wild birds around the property of varying kinds and most of them have nests and are raising babies and now feeding babies, catching bugs and taking them back to them, so that's nice to see. The garden's been growing reasonably well, though some of the plants look like they would appreciate having a little more sunlight. There's been very, very little of that in the past six weeks. But overall, it's gone from looking like this, which isn't very big, to later on in the video you see what it's looking like today. And did I mention lots and lots of rain? The ducks love it. Chickens have gotten to tolerate it because it's just rained every day, so they come outside anyway. The songbirds, you know, still fly around in it because it's just been pretty nonstop rain. And I don't have tons of video clips up because often it's hard to 
handle camera equipment outside in downpours, but I have a few showing a little bit. It takes a good bit of rain to make water stand in a gravel driveway that's on top of a several hundred feet of gravel underneath. This compilation of clips might just about include all the moments of sunshine that we've had in the past um, several, well, over a month now, because they have been so few and far between. But it is very neat to see, especially when a time lapse can show it to you sped up, the moisture and clouds coming and going. The area is thoroughly recharging in our area from the drought the past few years, so that is wonderful. Streams and creeks are flowing high, reservoirs are full nearly to the brim, um, things are soaking back into the aquifer, and if you're wondering what that truck and trailer is down by the tiny house, we finally got, on our third try, a after six and a half months, a propane guy to show up and do the hookup, so very shortly you're going to see our new stove going in the tiny house. So the bagger is not on the mower right now because the grass is so thick it fills up within a few feet, but it appears to be currently occupied being a kitten catcher. Yeah, were you guys all having a good nap? Oh, you're pretty cute in there. Last couple days since I pulled it off the mower, these guys have decided this is the best place to nap.
sure if you can pick out the size differences in the babies. Foggy's got 11 out there, and Ember's got 10. They each have their own batch, and they're about a week apart. Yes, these clips are in approximate chronological order, and last week we had snow in the mountains again, cold, cold rain down here, and then it actually cleared overnight, and so we got three nights of freezes last week. Pretty hard frost on everything, making beautiful crystals. The garden beds were covered, everything is fine under there. A few potato leaves got burnt where they were so big and bushy they were pushed into the edges of the covers, but everything in the garden is fine. And as far as I can tell, everything else is, but it's very rare for us to only have had three nights of frost in close to six weeks. Um, that's highly unusually warm for us, but it is beautiful to see the frost patterns on everything. another day of sun Micah was once again over and we did a lot more splitting and stacking firewood this wood is all from dead standing trees that were you know have been dead for years are pretty thoroughly cured out except for one uh, we had a, a very wet cottonwood that was cut because it was in a location that was in the way of something so that's stacked off on the side now under the lean-to it'll be dry in a year or two but everything else has been cured out for a long, long time at this point. And 
once again, we're just using the waste wood and turning it into useful, productive things like a heating source instead of it just all burning up in yet another wildfire. So that was a fun day, and it's just the kind of project I think all, all three of us really enjoy working on firewood together. And as you'll notice here, that there tends to be a lot of bugs and stuff under the bark on, on long dead trees. So every time if we step away from the splitter for a minute to go get a drink, have a lunch, etc., you'll see that all the chickens come racing over to start going through the, the bark and debris and wood splinters and stuff to find all of the bugs that might be there to be found. And so that's wonderful because then when we bring wood indoors for anything, there is almost never any bugs anywhere in it because we have a pretty awesome bug patrol going on. There is not much that they miss. Inside the lean-to, you'll see here in a second where we're stacking the firewood up on top of um, pallets just so it's not in contact with the ground. Somebody had asked me how long firewood will last in this area. I know folks who have a 25 plus year old pile sitting outdoors uncovered and it's still just perfectly fine. It's a little more grayed out on the surface than the fresh split would look but otherwise it uh, is just fine. I know some of you guys in more humid climates that probably would not be the case. It might well um, you know, decompose before them. But we have a generally dry and cold climate despite the rain this spring. So this stack, especially off the ground and under the lean-to roof, should last for years. And we are pretty close to having two years worth in there, which is a, a getting to be a comfortable backup supply of you know, wood for whatever may happen. Now I'm going to just start telling you while, while you finish watching me stack wood about the next project, Clay had a really great idea. He had a, you know, a gas powered four wheeler he's had for many years, but here on this property being only a little over three acres, it's not something that we use a whole lot for most things. So he decided to sell that. And instead we found a secondhand and not running actually electric one. So this is basically a golf cart, but shaped like a four wheeler and with four wheel drive. It had poorly cared for batteries that were thoroughly corroded. Nothing would start. We got new batteries. This was something that was really nice to have Mike's help with because he's a bit of a wiring expert on old machines. And we changed out the old batteries, put in the new ones. It does run and now we have a quiet little machine that we can do projects around our property on without worrying about noise levels, which makes it much more pleasant for me. I don't really enjoy running machines. So this was kind of a neat project to restore something that wasn't running at all and get it to being kind of our big empowered uh, wheelbarrow around the place. Well, that work. There was a little bit of me that was like, we're doing all this work and it's not gonna work. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of me that wanted that. But Seems to be working just fine. As you can hear, it's dead quiet and that is pretty handy. I kind of like in this operation, I'm in the dry. Fairly likes his new, new ride. You think it's pretty good? Yeah. Yeah, it's your new favorite thing. We do have grid power in the shop that can charge it, but we could also charge this, of course, from the excess power at this time of year from the solar panels. So this is a machine that I think is going to get used a lot at this time of year, and Burley absolutely adores it. He's always liked four-wheelers, but he's pretty sure this is his machine, and he doesn't even want to get out of it because he likes riding in it. Trees we were cutting up, by the way, we would have never cut down a green tree here if we could have helped it, but one of those violent windstorms snapped three trees in a cluster there on the corner of the property, so we had to clean them up so they wouldn't break the ones near them. You ladies trying to decide which box is best? Yeah. rivers and creeks had cleared up somewhat from spring snow out, but we've had so much heavy rain that they are pretty muddy again. But once again, it's great to see the water flowing. 
poor boy. You poor baby boy. to like our nest bucket set up pretty well still. We have the original five and we just stacked another layer on top. Maybe someday they'll get a frame but we have more hens laying. Right now we got seven of the five full but we still get this because they'll do this no matter how many buckets there are. Blondie is just positive she wants the same bucket. Not any other identical empty bucket but that one goofy little birds. Love our honeybees and it's very wonderful to see all the huge variety of other bees from several varieties of wild bumblebees to mini pollinator bees and all kinds of little ones that I don't know the names for that also frequent the flowers around our place. We've made our way the whole way through spring and right up to the first few days of summer as per the calendar. That was hail from a storm last night. It was enough to turn the ground white for a bit and we had some pretty epic thunder and lightning rolling around for a bit once again. And the next morning it produced very, very thick th fog. So now we're up to pretty much the end of June. This video started with clips filmed back about the middle of May. So that kind of covered the last six weeks. You can see how much the garden's grown in that time from planting to what it looks like this morning. So that's a little overview of the last little bit around here. And we'll see you guys in the next one.
Thanks for spending your valuable time with us. I hope you learned something interesting and useful. Or found something beautiful here.